Hello, and thank you for stopping by HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at functions and the four basic operations. That's addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. We, com we can combine functions using the four traditional operations by setting up the given operations and simplifying. This will create a new function, and that new function name often just has the name of the operation, what, what that thing's called. So like if, it's an, if you added two functions, we would call that the sum function. If you subtracted the difference function, multiplied the product function, divided the quotient function. Due to extreme laziness on the part of the mathematics community who can't bother to write more than absolutely necessary, these following expressions are equivalent. So the sum function, if we have two different functions, f of x and g of x, and we add them together, we can just combine the, the names. So we can just put the f, the, the names of the functions being added, and then whatever we're gonna add at, at, at whatever value we're gonna add, usually it's x. The difference function, we can combine into one function, the product function. And uh, due to another operation of functions that's not gonna be described in this video, rather than using any type of dot, and I wouldn't use a time sign just because of the variables, um, we frequently will just put the two names of the functions together since they are typically lowercase letters, we can do that um, because that does mean multiplication. So as a rule of thumb, for multiplication for the product function, don't put the operation, right? Because it's just implied when they're together that that's multiplication. And the quotient function we can combine and it looks like that. The quotient function is the only one that potentially will have restrictions or additional restrictions on the domain. So whatever the restrictions are for f or g, those would also apply to the sum difference product function. But the quotient function will have something extra because now the, the denominator, whatever function is in the denominator, cannot equal zero. Okay, so we're gonna look at an example. We have f of x equals 5x minus 7 and g of x equals 3 minus x. Let's state the domain of each function. So the domain of f, well, let's see. If we look at this, f is a linear equation and linear equations don't have any restrictions. There's no real numbers that I can plug into f that won't give me a real number output. So the domain of f would be all real numbers. So we can say negative infinity to infinity. g is also a linear function. Um, so again, no restrictions on the domain. So negative infinity to infinity. Okay, so now we wanna complete the table. So we're gonna do the operation, get our functions, and then state the domain for each one. And again, since there are no restrictions on the domains for f or g, the sum, difference, and product functions should not have any restrictions on the domain either. The only ones that will will be the quotient functions. First, we're gonna just add the two functions. So that would just be like saying f uh, 5x minus seven plus three minus x. And then we can combine like terms, 5x minus x is four x, negative seven plus three is minus four. So the sum function would be four x minus four, also a linear equation, also no restrictions as anticipated. Next, we have the difference function. Um, but this one's specifically f minus g. So this would be f of f, uh, why do I keep saying that? 5x minus 7 minus 3 minus x. We want to make sure that we put here, we need those parentheses. In the first example, we didn't. Uh, we can distribute the subtraction sign, or we just have to remember that the signs will change. I'm going to distribute just so it's right there in front of my face. That would become a plus. And now we can turn that into addition. So 5x plus x is 6x. Negative 7 and negative 3 is negative 10. So the difference function when it's f minus g is 6x minus 10, also a linear function, no restrictions on the domain. g minus f, so this is also a difference function, but this time the functions are switched. So we put g first this time, this would be 3 minus x minus 5x minus 7. And again, I would suggest sub distributing the subtraction sign, so it would become negative, this would become positive. And now we can combine like terms, negative x and negative 5x or negative 6x. 3 and positive 7 are positive 10. And when we switch, when we subtract two things and then we switch the order, we should end up with the exact opposite. So this should be the exact opposite is this, which it is. This one is still a linear function, no restrictions on the domain. Next, we have the product function. So now we want to multiply the two functions together. To multiply, we would want to use the distributive property. We need to multiply each term from f to each term in g. Just because there's little space there, I'm going to come up here and do this. So 5x minus 7 times 3 minus x, that would be 15x. 
minus 5x squared minus 21 plus 7x. Rewriting this and combining like terms, I'm going to put that x squared term first, so negative 5x plus 22x minus 21. So our product function, negative 5x squared plus 22x minus 21. And the domain on this, so while it's not linear anymore, this is a quadratic, and quadratics also have no restrictions on the domain. So it would be from negative infinity to infinity. Next, we have one of the diff uh, quotient functions. Um, this is going to be f over g, so that would be 5x minus 7 over 3 minus x. And that's it. We can't simplify anything. There's no common factors there. Try to clean that up a little bit. Nope, that looks even worse. Oh well. 5x minus 7 over 3 minus x. But the next thing we need to do is determine the domain. So here we do have something new because that denominator, 3 minus x, in this particular function cannot equal 0. If I add x to both sides, that would mean 3 cannot be x. So x, we can plug in anything we want in the real number system except for 3. And we can represent that by saying negative infinity to 3 and 3 to infinity. And then lastly, the other quotient function, this would be 3 minus x over 5x minus 7. And again, we can't simplify because there's no common factors. Uh, we will have restrictions on the domain again because this time, I'm going to come up here, 5x minus 7 can't equal 0. That means 5x can't equal 7, which means x can't equal 7 over 5. So we can plug in anything we want into this one, including 3, but we cannot plug in 7 fifths. So we're going to say the domain is from negative infinity to 7 over 5, and from 7 over 5 to infinity. Our next example, um, so we're given f of x equals x squared plus 8, that's a quadratic. g of x equals, a, it's a square root function, the square root of 2 minus x. And before we complete the table, let's talk about the domains of each of these. So the domain of f of x, it's a quadratic, it has no restrictions. So the domain is going to be from negative infinity to infinity. Uh, here, with our uh, radical, with our square root, we do have restrictions. Uh, the radical has to be non-negative, meaning, so let's see, 2 minus x must be bigger than or equal to 0. That means 2 has to be bigger than or equal to x. If we turn that around, x has to be less than or equal to 2. Right? If we plug in 3, that would be 2 minus 3, that's negative 1. The square root of negative 1 is not a real number. So we do have restrictions on the domain of g. x has to be less than or equal to 2. So we can say from negative infinity to 2. And because 2 is included, 0 is allowed, we can take the square root of 0 with 0. We put 2, uh, we close it with a bracket. All right, so let's look at our uh, various functions here. The sum function, so we're just going to write x squared plus 8, that was f plus the square root of 2 minus x. We can't combine anything because that's not, nothing's like terms. Um, the domain would stay the same as g. So we're going to have that same restriction that we had for g. So it's going to be from negative infinity to 2. The first difference function that we're looking at, f minus g. So this would be x squared plus 8, that's f, minus g. Since g is just one term, we can just leave it like that. And this difference function will continue to have the same domain restrictions from negative infinity to 2. Next, we have g minus f of x. So this would be the square root of 2 minus x minus x squared plus 8. We want to be careful about that parenthesis. We can write it like this, or if you want to distribute the subtraction, it would be the square root of 2 minus x minus x squared minus 8, and maybe we would put the negative x squared first. I think this is fine. Again, we're not going to have any like terms due to the fact that there's no like terms. Domain will stay what it was, same restrictions. Okay, next we have the product function. So this would be when we take f, x squared plus 8, and multiply it to 2 minus x. So this would become x squared times the square root of 2 minus x plus 8 times the square root of 2 minus x. There's no like term, so we're just going to have these two terms as our final product function. And we still have the same restrictions on the domain from negative infinity to 2, where 2 is included. Okay, our last two examples, we have f over g, the quotient function, f over g. This would be x squared plus 8 over the square root of 
2 minus x. So not only can we not have the radical negative, but now it's in the denominator, which means this, the square root of 2 minus x, also cannot equal 0. So we have a new restriction. Well, when would this equal 0? This is going to equal 0. Let's see, if we square both sides, square, we get 2 minus x cannot equal 0. So 2 cannot equal 0. So now when we write our domain, we have a new restriction. 2 is also a restricted value. So the domain is going to look very similar, except there's one huge difference. When we go to write it, we use a parenthesis this time instead of a bracket. Because now we can't include 2 because that radical cannot be 0 due to the fact that it's in a denominator. Our last example, the difference quotient of g over f would be the square root of 2 minus x over x squared plus 8. So we're going to continue to have the same restrictions on the domain. We still can't have that negative under the radical. But does the new denominator can add anything else? Does it have any further restrictions? So we're going to say x squared plus 8 cannot equal 0. That means that x squared cannot equal negative 8. Well, there's good news. x squared can't equal negative 8. There's no real number when you square it whose square is negative 8. So that means there are no additional restrictions due to the fact that, and, and if you don't believe me, you can take the square root of both sides, but the square root of a negative is an imaginary number, indicating to us no further restrictions. So it's going to be from negative infinity to 2, and we can go back to the bracket because it's okay if there's a 0 in the numerator, it was only the denominator where there was a problem. We looked at examples where we just looked at the functions at x, but we can also look when there's other specific values uh, on these operation functions themselves. So we have f, which is a quadratic function, g, which is a linear function, and we want to evaluate the following. So here's the interesting thing. You can do this whichever way you want. You can either look at f of 2 and g of 2 separately and then add those values together, or you can combine the functions and then plug in 2 and those should give us the same answer. So let's let's make sure that this works. So we're going to try f of 2, which is 3 times 2 squared plus 2 times 2. That's going to be 12 because 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12 plus 4. So we get f of 2 is 16. And f of 3 is going to be 3 times 2 minus 1. That's 6 minus 1 is 5. So if I do f of 2, I'm sorry, I don't know why I said f of 3. f of, and I don't know why I stopped that. What am I doing? g of 2. How about g of 2? That's better. So f of 2 plus g, now I'm writing f again, g of 2 would be 16 plus 5, which is 21. Now let's see if we combine the functions first. So if I add f plus g, that would be 3x squared plus 2x plus 3x minus 1. That's 3x squared plus 5x minus 1. Now if I plug in 2, so if I do f plus g of 2, I get 3 times 2 squared plus 5 times 2 minus 1. This, remember, is 12. This is 10 and minus 1. So 12 plus 10 is 22, minus 1 is 21. So either way, you end up with the same value. You have to decide which way is going to, seems like it's going to be less work, and that's really up to you. Generally, I prefer the second option just because there's just less to plug in, so there's less of a chance of making a mistake. Okay, let's try this again. This time we have a difference uh, function and we're looking at the specific value of negative one. So if we subtract our functions here, and okay, now I said I prefer the second one and then here we have to be really careful. I'm gonna say x, I'm just gonna combine these first because of the fact that there is subtraction. So it's gonna be three x squared plus two x minus three x minus one. If you're gonna do this, make sure you're careful with that subtraction, it gets distributed here. So then we would have 3x squared plus 2x, uh, that would be, this becomes a plus, right? Minus 3x plus 1, 3x squared minus x plus 1. Now we're ready to plug in negative 1, so I'm going to say f minus g of negative 1. That's 3 times negative 1 squared minus negative 1 plus 1. This is 1, 1 times 3 is 3. This becomes plus 1 plus 1, so we end up with 5. So I end up with a difference function of 5. And again, if you plug in negative 1 separately, if you plug it into f and then you plug it into g and then you subtract those values, we should also end up with 5. And we can verify this would be 3 times negative 1 squared is 3. This would be 3 minus 2 is 1. 
Over here we get negative 1 times 3 is negative 3 minus 1. This is negative 4. So we would end up with 1 minus negative 4, which of course does equal 5. So it, again, whichever way makes more sense to you, that's the way that you should stick with. In our last example, we want to look at the product function at negative 4. In this case, I do find it easier to plug in separately and then multiply the two values at the end rather than having to use distribution. So if we look at f of negative 4, that would be 3 times negative 4 squared plus 2 times negative 4. Negative 4 squared is 16, and 16 times 3 is 48. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. 40 minus 8 is 40. And g of negative 4 is 3 times negative 4 minus 1. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12, minus 1 is negative 13. So then lastly, we would look at 40 times negative 13. That would be negative 400 and... 120, so that would be negative 520. To verify that this really is it, we can look at the product function first. So we can look at f times g of x, and then plug in negative 4 at the end. So 3x squared plus 2x times 3x minus 1. That would give us 9x cubed minus 3x squared plus 6x squared minus 2x. That would be 9x cubed plus 3x squared minus 2x. Now that we have the product function, we could plug in negative 4. I'm going to come all the way up here because I am running out of space. So then if we look at fg of negative 4, that would be 9 times negative 4 cubed plus 3 times negative 4 squared minus 2 times negative 4. Negative 4 cubed is negative 64. And negative 64 times 9 is some big number that I don't know off the top of my head. Let's see. Negative 64 times 9, that's 36. 576. Yikes. So we end up with negative 576. And then negative 4 squared is 16. 16 times 3 is 48, plus 48. Negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8, plus 8. If we combine the positives, 48 plus 8, that's 56. Negative 576 plus 56 would give us negative 520. So neither case is super ideal, especially since I didn't have a calculator. If you have a calculator, it might be a little bit simpler to do, but this is looking at functions and the operations.